Hello and welcome to another bug bounty case study. This time I extracted all the cross-site scripting reports from recent years to learn how are people actually making money with XSSs. Because we all associate them with alerts popping up everywhere, but there were many questions bothering me. For example, how are people actually showing impacts? Do they just show the alert or do they actually escalate? Do they bypass CSP or do they just report an XSS without the bypass? Or what payloads are people using? And payloads from all those reports is exactly what I will show you in this video. Enjoy! This time, the scope of the study was 174 reports, which is more than in case of the SSRF case study, but there was ma many more reports, but I restricted myself to only the ones from the last three years to avoid having to deal with uh, older technologies, older XSSs, or things like Flash or browser XSS auditors. So here, we have reports from uh, 2020 up to 2022, or there is an exception for reports with 5,000 bounty or more. In this case, I inc included uh, even older reports. And out of those, the most common payload was EMG on error combination, which occurred 40 times. I actually didn't expect it. Um, I thought that the script payload, the script tag will be the most common, but I'm really happy to see the, the on error attribute being uh, more popular, but I would like this, this ratio to be even more in favor of the EMG tag. Why is that? Because when we have the script tag, it doesn't give us any advantages over the, the image tag, yet it gives us some disadvantages. There are some things that, um, that the image tag does better. For example, when we have an, a DOM XSS uh, using inner HTML um, attribute, inner HTML assignment, it will not work with the script tag. If we use the, the most typical payload here, this will not work because the script tag cannot be used like this directly using the inner HTML assignment, which may cause us to miss an XSS, which we could otherwise find uh, if we would use the, the image payload. The image payload looks like this in the most common form. Of course, it wasn't always exactly uh, the same in all the reports, but, but in most of them it looked like this. And we can see that exactly the same assignment results in alert popping up. This payload simply means that we have uh, EMG tag, which is an image as you probably could guess. Then we have source of the image, which should be something that doesn't return an image. In this case, we can see the, the 404 um, here. And then there is event handler, which fires on the on error attribute. Um, and here, the value of this attribute is the JavaScript code that gets executed after this event. There are also a few tricks that you can use here. For example, if you have to bypass some filters, you can, instead of using the space between the tag and the attribute name, you can also use the forward slash. It also works. You can also use the slash between attributes, but not in this form. If I run this, it does not work the image did refresh, the, the image is rendered, but for us to be able to use the forward slash between different attributes of the tag, so between the SRC and on error attribute, we would have to use the quotes around the source, uh, the value of the source attribute. We can see it works again, but if we are all already using the, the quotes here, we do not even need this this character, uh, we can simply use it like this. This may be very handy for, for some bypasses. And in case of, of this, um, the, the first one, the first attribute, we cannot 
use nothing, we cannot use quotes, mm, it won't work, it's like a, a tag where I think this whole part is treated as the, the tag name, so it will not work, so it has to either be a, a forward slash or a white space, I believe things like new line work as well, mm, yes, yes they do, but, uh, but nothing nothing else. Um, so in my opinion we should be using the image tag to uh, to detect XSS. We should use it over the script tag in the beginning because it gives us more advantages and the other advantages is that even if my target has some sanitization and my payload from the on error attribute will be thrown out I will still see the image being rendered on the page. I will still see this, this little icon right here, which will show me that I can inject HTML into the website. I just can't execute JavaScript code. And then I would start to, to work to bypass the sanitizer. If I would use the script tag and it would be removed completely, I would not see it on the page. I would have to take a look at the source of the page, find the place where it should be, but it's not there. So this is, this is harder. However, there are situations when we need the script tag because if we have a website with content security policy enabled, then in this case, the, the content security policy is very, very restrictive then we will not be able to use the the image tag the the image uh, we, obviously we can use the image tag but we cannot use it for an xss because it requires the unsafe inline directive in content security policy which in proper content security policies there is no unsafe inline attribute and the thing is that we have many ways of bypassing content security policy, but for most of them, we do need the script tag because for example, if we even if we find a script that's on whitelisted domain and we can use something like script src and here we have the whitelisted domain, we have to use the script tag for that. With the event handlers, there's pretty much nothing we can try. So what to do if we have the injection point in the inner HTML assignment, as I've shown you earlier, and we want to use the script tag, but in this case, it will not, it will not work because, because of the inner HTML assignment, we can use something like uh, iframe src doc, which is which looks like this. And so we have an iframe here, which actually has an src doc attribute, which is like the source of the iframe. And even though we are still inside the inner HTML assignment, we can use the script tag inside the iframe. So we cannot use the script tag directly, but we can use the iframe with the src doc attribute and the script tag inside. When I run this, we can see that even though I was using the inner HTML assignment, I could exploit an XSS with this way with the script tag. And we can see that also the origin of this, the domain of this, uh, of this iframe is remained the same. It is not null origin or, or something that would uh, make the XSS invalid or hard to exploit. It is still the same domain. So if you have an inner HTML based XSS and you have content security policy, then you have to use the, the script tag to bypass it. So, so in the real life, obviously, the, the way I, I showed you here requires the same unsafe inline directive in content security policy. But in the real life, you would have to use script SRC and here you need to find a whitelisted domain, a whitelisted, uh, a whitelisted script or, or some JSONP endpoint or whatever, bypassing CSP could be a subject on its own. Next, we'll step into the JavaScript protocol 
we just divide it into two categories, I would say. The JavaScript protocol is looks like this. So for example, when we have a link, a normal link would have HTTP or HTTPS protocol, but we can also use the JavaScript protocol, which is very rarely used in, in actual websites but it is a perfect vector for XSS. Uh, we can see that this, this big element is a element, which is a link. Uh, ref is the target of the link and it has the JavaScript protocol. When I click this, the alert pops up. Uh, so this is the XSS and there are like two categories. Um, I divided it and one outlier. One category is something like this where the attacker or the hunter, I should say, was only able to use this as the link target. Uh, so, so basically as H, a href and the victim had to click this, uh, this link to be attacked. And the other category was JavaScript in one way or another, opening this URL directly. So I don't know, using window open function, location have or, or something like this. And the victim didn't have to click on the link to, to execute the XSS. We can still see that most of them anyway require some kind of user interaction because many of them are just reflected XSSs. But if we get into more details, many of these uh, interactions was a victim opening a URL, so a normal reflected XSS. But in these ones that were href or there was also one report with, uh, with form action, the victim would have to click the link or click a button. So that's like also a user interaction, but in practice it's more interaction because it might be two clicks or, or one click plus one stored XSS. Mm, so that's that's more interaction. And we can see big names being mentioned here because there are not that many of these XSSs, only 23. But take a look, the average bounty is six and a half thousand dollars, while the average for all the reports was only four and a half thousand dollars. So very significant difference. And I think the reason for it is that we have five times Facebook here and five times Google in the top, which, which obviously pay a lot. And we also have here some smaller programs, uh, Shopify three times, um, some undisclosed ones, but we can see that people have problems with, with uh, this pseudo protocol, with this JavaScript protocol. Probably many developers don't even know about it because as I've said, I think I've seen it once being used on a real website and all the other usages are just XSSs. Um, personally, I've also found, found a few XSSs with this. So, so definitely, definitely worth knowing about it. And uh, what I'd like to mention is that there were two bypasses where hunters um, were able to inject white space characters. So a space or I believe a horizontal tab um, inside the, the protocol and it still works. Uh, there we go. This should also execute in the browser. I think it can be um, percent zero nine per or percent 20 or a new line. Um, and the browser still treats it as a valid JavaScript protocol. Um, otherwise, it is quite hard to, to mess up with, with this inside the browser. The browser is quite strict when it comes to protocols. Mm, so, so not much you can do than that. We also had some like custom filters where you would inject one tag inside another or things like that. Mm, and also two cases with, with encoding bypasses, some kind of encoding bypasses. And the next group of payloads that I've separated are other event handlers. Um, of course, categorizing these payloads is very difficult because on one hand, I want to 
save all the details about the reports, but on, on the other hand, I have to somehow merge similar ones. So, so statistically, it makes sense to look at them as a whole. And other event handlers were payloads that also used accesses in like image on error. It's an event handler, but it wasn't an image tag or it wasn't an on error tag. Sometimes it was just the preference because there is actually nothing magical about the image tag. It works on these event handlers works work on all the HTML elements. So sometimes it was just the preference of the handler to use something else. Sometimes it was motivated by uh, by WAFs or by filters. And in other cases, um, there were there were uh, there were other motivations. For example, we have uh, here some bypass where the hunter had some some filter and he bypassed it, bypassed it um, using the nested tag inside. And what I'd like to highlight here is he was using the mouse over attribute, which is which fires when you hover a mouse over the element. So it requires user interaction. But the hunter was able to bypass the filter with this. And then before submitting the payload, he or she, I don't know, changed the attribute from on mouse over to on focus with the autofocus attribute. So it does not require user interaction. It does not, the final payload does not require the victim to hover a mouse over this element, but it will fire immediately, which reduces the user interaction, which likely can get you more bounties. On the other hand, uh, here we have a report where I felt that the hunter could also get more from the report um, by creating another payload, by using another payload. This is in Alibaba. And there is some thought process about bypassing a filter. It's all good. But on, in the end, the hunter used the image tag with the on-click attribute. There was like a nested JavaScript inside, which was removed by the filter. Really, really fun, fun report. But in the end, he left it with the on-click attribute, which means the victim has to click on the image to get attacked, which is a user interaction, which is, I think, unnecessary. Of course, I don't know all the details, but there are dozens of payloads that, that do not require the user interaction in this way, do not require the victim to hover a mouse over something. For example, you, you can go to port swigger cheat sheet and here you can input um, what tag you can use, what event handlers you can use. There are, I think, 250 event handlers or something like this. And I am pretty sure that this hunter could achieve this XSS without the user interaction uh, and maybe a bigger payout. Maybe guys from Alibaba thought that they can escalate it uh, by themselves. But there is a chance that, that the hunter here left some money on the table. So remember about trying to prepare your payloads so they require as little user interaction as possible. The next group of payloads are payloads from XSS Hunter. It's a tool for blind XSSs, which of course, in, in most of cases here, led to a blind XSS. And often hunters didn't even know where the, the payload fired. Some of these reports are just, hello, I get a ping from XSS Hunter and I do not know much about where did this fire or why did this fire. I think this is one of the shortest reports that I've seen, especially that it is a valid one and rewarded $3,000. Mm. In the initial message, the hunter only said that he doesn't know where his XSS hunter script is, but then he realized that he can extract it from the referrer header, so he gave more details but Shopify team knew what to do, so, so he was rewarded for it. And in many cases, uh, these XSS Hunter payloads 
where the reports were looking like this, just an XSS Hunter fire, not much more information that the hunters know, sometimes a screenshot, uh, but, but usually nothing. Also no filter bypasses because it's really hard to bypass a filter when you don't know where your payload is, is being rendered. So I'm pretty sure that there are many blind XSSs out there, but in spots where we can't see the the payloads after filtering or after sanitization and we just cannot find them easily. So yeah, not, not much information extracted from these reports. Also, XSS Hunter will be deprecated uh, in March 2023, so we have to find an alternative. I don't know yet what tool will I be using, but, but we have to, to think about it and we have to find something else. Here, I'd like to take a while to thank all the BBR Premium members for making the case study possible. It's actually a deal on which everyone benefits because you get access to the case study. The full case study is on the member platform. I get to dedicate time to do these case studies, which I really like. And otherwise, I probably couldn't dedicate as much time to, to do it regularly. And actually, everyone else, non-members also benefit because as this video shows, I'm always disclosing about one third of the case study publicly so that everyone benefits and everyone can, can learn something. So thank you for this. Next, we step onto the category SVG, which, was, which were SVG files. In most cases, these were file uploads, image uploads, SVG files are images that can also be valid um, HTML and they can contain um, script tags, they can contain JavaScript code inside, so very, very useful for this. We can see that the average bounty for, for them is quite low. I don't think this is much of a trend. I think it, it is uh, a bit unlucky. I don't see any, any reason why these, these accesses would be rewarded lower. We can see that all of them were stored because these were file uploads, but in some of them, the victim would have to open a URL with the file. So it is pretty much a random URL, which makes the impact a little bit lower than a stored XSS, which fires, for example, on the main page or on the page that the victim would visit. Otherwise, here, the, the attacker would have to trick the victim into visiting a URL, which makes the impact similar to, to a reflected XSS, and probably a bit higher, but, but similar. So, uh, so that's about SVGs. Remember to, to always test for them when you can upload an avatar, upload an image, or pretty much any file. We also have here one of the very few reports that used more advanced HTML features. Uh, in this case, it was uh, SVG with foreign object tag. So we are talking about HTML namespaces, something I did learn a bit about uh, this year. And I have some reports that, that I will hopefully disclose in some time. Uh, but I was hoping to find more reports like this during this case study. Unfortunately not. And I think this is like the only one that that relies on these more advanced mechanisms. It was in GitLab and uh, it was only rewarded to one and a half thousand dollars. And then we have other payloads, which I will not dedicate the whole category for, for each of them because it's rather boring. We have a lot of occurrences of the SVG onload combination. So the SVG tag with the onload attribute. To be honest, I do not know if this is this has any advantages over the image on error or the script tag. Uh, I would I would not use this payload at all. I fully understand using SVG tag with the combination with the script tag, but but SVG with onload. Mm, I, I don't get what what's the advantage of this. We also had one blind XSS that didn't use the XSS Hunter, but did use blind F tool or something like this. 
uh, I didn't hear about it before, but now since the Accesses Hunter is getting deprecated, uh, I should probably probably learn about it. We also had um, one or two bypasses, one one uh, payload with Angular JS. This was prototype pollution, so also a very specific report. Um, I also thought that there would be more prototype pollution bugs, but uh, but there weren't that many. We had one cool report with uh, without the CSP bypass on GitLab where the hunter could use the base tag to actually attack the victim without bypassing the CSP because the base tag tells the, the website that all the relative URLs, so, so if you have uh, any URL, for example, just a slash, then if you have the base tag, then it would take your domain from the base tag and then append the slash as the path. So it is hard to exploit, it is difficult to exploit, and it is one of the ways to have any impact if you can't bypass content security policy. Because the base, base tag is another CSP directive, which is probably not as common as the script SRC. And in this case, uh, the attacker was able to turn this into an account, account takeover, and he was rewarded $14,000, so very, a uh, very nice bounty. I think it was one of uh, the only report that, that used this. We see that two times the combination of uh, iframe src doc plus the script tag. So these are accesses that um, were present in the inner HTML assignment, but hunters uh, used the script tag either because they had to or because they wanted to. I don't know. Um, we also had two occurrences of the open graph. I think there was one open graph uh, protocol and one OMBED, which I think I will cover in the next issue of, of BBR Premium, because I think there are many bugs to be found there. And we also had like one embed SRC tag, which I don't even know what it does. Mm, I think it was, uh, oh, it was the Airbnb mm, report from a few years ago where I even have a video about it. It was like six different bypasses, uh, a CSP bypass with SWF file because this is the older report. So a really, really nice one. And the other one's quite hard to, to, to classify, but uh, if you want, if you have access to the database, if you are a member, you can open the database, see them one by one and see if there's anything interesting for you or not. So here you have totals for the amount of reports and the average bounty per payload. If you want to get access to the full case study, which is on BBR Premium Platform, it's about two thirds of the study there. And this video plus, plus what was in the last issue of BBR newsletter is about one third. If you want to get access to the full one, join BBR Premium, you will also get access to the database with all these reports, so you can even extend this case study But what you want to know. If you want to join, go to bbre.dev slash premium. For now, thank you for watching and goodbye.